The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Oh, man, we're down 24 on the S&P. Cash Dow uh, is down 252. NASDAQ's uh, off 49. Uh, was doing pretty good. Got into about 12.15. Uh, and we, uh, man, what do we do? We, we had a little announcement. And that is Apple is closing 11 of its 275 stores in those that it thinks are most affected by COVID. And the interesting thing to me is that everybody started selling Apple. I, it didn't hurt them during the close down. Uh, even though they have 270 stores, they only get to about 18% of the U.S. population. The other 82% has to do something else. Um, my thought would be, you know, so they can't go to an Apple store. They can always go to a Best Buy. Those are still open. And uh, they, I, I think other than a few days, they never really closed. So I don't know if there's a big thing here. We've been having these markets with ultralight volume uh, being run somewhere around noon, one-ish, uh, every day this week. This one's the first one that seems to have broken 3,100. Still, the volume, uh, incredibly light. We're doing about 7.2 billion shares now um, as we go into it. And of course, it's options expiration. Uh, Expect the unexpected is one of those uh, best ones. And, of course, this is quad witching. So we have a lot of stuff going on inside of it. Apple may have uh, put a monkey wrench in a lot of plans. Now, one of the things that's also interesting is Apple's got a big dog and pony. We'll be talking about that with Tom, uh, Tom O'Brien at 3.30. But uh, Apple's got a big dog and pony with new products. I... I I always see kind of an ulterior motive, and I'm always wondering whether or not they're trying to get everybody short to uh, thump them come Monday. Maybe they got a new product announcement. Maybe not. But I always kind of look at these things, and when they come out, could have easily come out after the bell, not during midday. I, as I say, uh, is there always an ulterior motive? No. Can you just uh, sometimes... Uh, or should you actually uh, blame uh, incompetence other than uh, over, uh, what would you call it, uh, uh, a, a real reason for it? Yeah, a lot of times you can. But I've seen it just too many times to think that it's random, especially on Apple. Uh, maybe somebody was really short, wanted to let them out. Maybe someone was wanting to buy some. You never know the real reason. Uh, but like I said, uh, no reason that the news wouldn't have come out right after the bell or before the bell or after the bell last night, uh, which is always has my scratch, my head scratching. Uh, okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, anyway, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at pathtfnn.com. And, of course, I always, always like you, uh, I like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. No ticks? Okay. Uh, two, two, two. What else do we have? Well, got a question. How am I doing? All my stocks are doing well today. Again, uh, like I've said over the last couple of weeks, I haven't been involved in the indexes themselves. I've been trading individual stocks or sectors, and uh, all of the four positions I have are higher at the moment on the day. And, of course, I'm long those. So everything looks good, at least so far. 
So what else do we have? Well, I guess I need to walk, knock on wood after I say that, right? So, uh, again, volume a little lighter. We, we had some real heavy down days, about 15, 17 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. We're down today on about seven. Maybe it continues. Options rollover Monday and Tuesday. Generally, not a good signal out of those two days. Wednesday, you start seeing the market move in the trend it's supposed to. So we also have that to look forward to. Okay, what else is going on here? Uh, well, uh, I don't know. Let's do a little history, and then we'll move on. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1953, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, who were convicted in 1952, I believe, of conspiring to pass U.S. atomic secrets to the Soviets, are executed at Sing Sing Prison in New York. Both refused to admit any wrongdoing, uh, proclaimed their innocence right up to the time of death by the electric chair. Rosenbergs were the first U.S. citizens to be convicted and executed for espionage during, or not during, a ongoing war. Um, now, interestingly enough, they had two young boys that were very interested on whether or not they were guilty or not. They started digging into it in the 90s and uh, actually got uh, one of their uh, compatriots to actually fess up to everything. Uh, they also uh, had the uh, government show everything that they had on them, including wiretaps back on the time. They were incredibly guilty. Um, really, basically the sons and, of course, uh, this compatriot who basically always said that he had nothing to do with it, knew nothing. I think he was 91 at the time, died a year later, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they did everything. And, of course, uh, at the time, the government only put forward what they actually needed to put forward to get the uh, confession. But because of that, uh, we have the manual on how to build an atomic bomb, which I have read. But uh, very interesting. It doesn't take that much to build an atomic bomb, uh, which is uh, kind of scary. What it does take is massive amounts of dollars to actually make uh, either uh, uranium or uh, uh, plutonium. And that's always the bugaboo. You can make a, a atomic bomb out of an old howitzer. Uh, getting the uh, uranium at uh, its level of about 80, 85% on uranium uh, to go boom. Uh, a, a, I think we paid $3 billion back in 1944 dollars uh, to get that done. And that's always been the big hurdle. Uh, the real uh, worries today uh, for uh, those folks that keep an eye on this is lasers because uh, there is a lot of thought and school, uh, uh, higher education colleges that work on laser separation, which could be dirt cheap and done in one room if you're not scared enough already. Boo! We'll be back in a minute. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, uh, we're looking at Apple here again. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648, or you can email me at uh, uh, at uh, path at tfnn.com. Then we'll go into the rest. Okay, uh, Apple, we were looking at it. Um, you had kind of a high in lows around 40, 50 million. Probably going to come in with that same volume here. Um, going to watch the close fairly uh, intensely as it's right on the top of the nine day. Uh, but it's also uh, right halfway through this gap up uh, from uh, the 16th. So why there's more volume in here, I like I said, I'm kind of, I'm looking at the chart, I'm thinking about what they're going to talk about Monday, and I wonder if they don't have some kind of big prod, uh, product uh, coming out or an announcement. Uh, and uh, going to try to get everybody short uh, before they get clubbed on Monday. It's just a thought. I do not know, but when I see this kind of action, especially when I know that there's a big dog and pony coming, I'm always uh, eh, there to scratch my own head. Okay, uh, questions out here. Okay, got it. Uh, da -da. Is GDX a hold over the weekend? Uh, to, 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 to. The problem I have with holding GDX is that you've got lower highs and higher lows. And, I mean, it looks fairly good out here uh, for this June 5th low with 50 million shares. You get the June 15th low at 32 million shares. So that actually looks kind of good. But you really didn't exceed it. You kind of tried to spike it today. Uh, to me, this looks more like kind of a triangle pattern developing. And my go-to uh, action on a, uh, on a triangle pattern is to let that happen. So let's say you just grow a line from May 19th all the way down this trend line out to some point in space out here where my mouse is. Same thing on the lower ones out here. I want it to break out of there, and on that breakout, if it's on the downside, you go long, and if it's on the high side, you short it. 
So I, if I wanted to be long here in the GDX, I would hope for a pop down that reverses within three days. And generally, uh, as Steve uh, Rhodes likes to say, uh, the best thing is a uh, failed uh, bearish excursion. Uh, that is the most bullish thing. Same thing with a, a, a failed bullish excursion out of the market. But um, you didn't ever get back down there. You were like a dime off of that June 5th. I would have liked it a lot, lot uh, more if you actually tapped it and then came back up. But you really haven't done much other than hit a high today. It's just slightly over those other candles in the last five days. So trading ranges, I generally like to wait until uh, we see a winner or a loser out of it and then try to take the opposite side of it uh, if it's one of these longer triangle patterns. So uh, I will go with Mr. Miyagi on this one. Best way to avoid fight, not be there. And I'm going to say you want to wait until uh, at least someone's thrown a few fists and we see what's other, what else is going on. Okay. Da, da, da. So how does Cipret look? I was looking and maybe we'll, uh, I'll have to ch check it after three o'clock, but uh Maybe there wasn't enough movement in it, but it was still showing like 20, 31, 25. Uh, someone was asking in the den. Um, and, of course, that may have changed with uh, the news in it. And, of course, one of the reasons why I don't go hog wild on options expiration on uh, quad witching, there are a lot of moving parts. I think I took one position this time, and that's about it for quad witching. Uh, two, I love to see uh, a lot, uh, on options expiration the VIX under 16 and the implied volatility under uh, 30 for whatever I'm trading. And there's just not a lot of good long-term trades and even short-term trades were problematic. I wanted to get into Micron yesterday and actually buy it. I was really hoping that it went under 50, like 49.50 or something, and I could buy the out of monies yesterday because I really looked like this thing was going to pop. And it got to 52.75. Uh, so if I would have gotten that 49.50, I would have gotten about a $3 move. It just never got weak enough. I think it got to like $50.50 or something yesterday. That was the other one that I was looking at. So uh, not much going on. Okay. Uh, okay, got that one answered. Uh, uh, okay, I'll have to answer that later. Got that. Uh, can we finally have a heavy down day? You can always have a heavy down day. It's just you need 15 billion shares for me to consider that. And let's see what the volume is right now. Uh, 7.6 billion shares. So, um, yeah, can you? You've got options uh, rollover on Monday and Tuesday. So you, you may get some noise Monday and Tuesday. My guess is that if you're really betting on some downside, it would probably come on Wednesday. Because generally... You get a lot of push push up one day and a push down on the next day for options rollover. And then you get the true direction come on Wednesday. So that was it. Okay. I think I got some other stuff going on here. Good. Okay. 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 Question on Tesla. Didn't really have a lot of movement in this one. Very light volume on it today. Uh, just kind of going right, uh, right. It looks like they're going to pin it at a thousand by the close and try to kill off as many options. Of course, um, if you had a lot of people, I mean, options expiration is all about uh, on Friday. They can move it just a little enough to actually uh, change a lot of dollars changing hands. Uh, but one of the best ways is just to park it. Uh, what do we have out here? 996. Uh, just park it at one of these big uh, numbers since everybody likes to buy options at the big numbers. And uh, that's about it. Okay. I think do we have any others out here. A uh, question about AMAT. 
Um, again, got back up to the previous high. That's March 3rd, $61.14. That had 14 million shares. Uh, into it today with about 5 million shares. So, yeah, applied materials uh, pretty much up against some fairly hard uh, numbers. This goes back to the 25th of February when this gap down with that uh, 10 million shares the day before 11 million shares. So if you're going to continue going up in the SMHs and AMAT, my guess is, uh, what is it, SMHs, you're going to have to chew through now. Uh, it's not going to be easy. I think all the easy money is over. Now it's time to get hard and rough, which always makes me think of Ike and Tina Turner. We don't like to do it easy. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, I hope I'm answering somebody's question here during the break. So we'll take a look and see what's happening here. Uh, okay, so we're off 20, I'm showing we're off 28 points. Let's update this just to make sure. Off 30 points on the S&P cash. Th 3,085. Uh, okay. Uh, question. You said last week that there was a 90% chance we closed over 3050. So you weren't worried about 
terrific downside. Yeah, and everything was looking pretty good, the downside of all these kinds of things. Any plan is great until you go to war or as uh, – what was the guys that – with the boxer? Everybody's got a plan in the ring until you get hit in the nose. So uh, you never know when those things are going to actually change. Got to be adaptable, which is uh, one of those things. Anyway, we'll look at the volume. Uh, we'll call 7.8 billion shares. So it's, it's picking up. I don't think we're going to get there. Also, I am always highly uh, suspicious of option expiration moves, especially on quad witching. The last 30 minutes um, for many years in the early 2000s was a ticket uh, to uh, go to the moon. I remember Tom O'Brien talking about uh, uh, sending his kids to college on trades that lasted the last 30 minutes of uh, the day uh, on the uh, XAU, or not the XAU, OEX. Uh, but they kind of put the kibosh on that. That was almost a license to print money back in 2003, 4, 5. But uh, by the time 2006 rolled around, they'd figured a way to make sure that you weren't going to make money on those last mon minute options on the OEX. And I, I'm trying to remember the last time anybody even talked about the OEX on TFNN. Can't even remember it. Okay, uh, questions else going on. Okay. Uh, to, 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 to. We talked about gold a little bit. Uh, questions on the TLT. Uh, again, uh, you're kind of in these trading ranges. I don't see... It's kind of like a boat sitting in the water still with no wind. Maybe you're going to get a little gust here, a gust there. But until this thing starts moving, I don't know if you have a really good way uh, or an edge in the market. This is kind of like my my answer on gold. I would much rather be a counterpuncher. A lot of uh, boxing references today. Rather be a uh, a counterpuncher uh, puncher after the move on this than trying to uh, look and see the move. you got light volume on the way up and on the way down, and we've had that for the last three days. It's not like there's a ton of volume every time we start selling off uh, or a lot of volume when we actually go up. Oh, we got a nice bounce there. 30.94 is the last tick I show. Um, again, these, in fact, I wanted to talk about this, never got a chance to uh, yesterday, but the markets are so, I, I, in fact, I talked about it two years ago, uh, maybe two and a half years ago, maybe longer, three years ago. Boy, time flies. Anyway, the, uh, there was a, uh, a gentleman uh, that worked uh, for uh, Chicago, I want to say outfit, but that sounds like the mob. Uh, a Chicago uh, data firm, and he was railing over the incredibly thin markets uh, out of uh, trading hours on the futures anymore. And they literally had gone to maybe a fourth or maybe even less, maybe an eighth uh, overnight. Uh, er yeah, Eric Hunsider, uh from, I'm just having a mental blank now on the name of his company. I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, anyway, he ended up selling it and, and they told him not to post any more Twitter. Yeah, Nanix. And not to post any more Twitter stuff because he was getting he was getting busy with the Twitter. Anyway, uh, the volumes just continue to come down and down and down. And I'm actually, you know, in the morning, first hour, hour and a half, uh, the uh, bids and asks, I mean, there's some in there. Uh, but the last three days, what we've really seen is the lack of any bid and ask uh, through about 2 o'clock. Then everything comes back. And my guess is we're just going to continue to see more and more volume go to the dark pools and out of the high-frequency traders uh, that have had a, a pretty good two or three months. Uh, but 40% every day of all trades go through these dark pools, and the dark pools are meant uh, so that they can't be front run 
by the uh, by the high frequency traders, and that's the way they get ar around them. They just do it all, and you really don't know till the end of the day. You start seeing all this volume pour in, and in the dark pool, all they have to do is by the end of the day actually pop it in. They're supposed to be like 30 minutes, and they're supposed to register it, but. It doesn't happen that way. There's no. I don't think that there's anybody in the SEC running around seeing if these people actually uh, post their trades uh, anywhere out of the dark pools. But you can do it all day. You can buy and sell. At the end of the day, you have to have those in. There are some fines for that. But that's why you see so much of the volume come in late in the day. It's those folks uh, out there in the dark pools who don't want to see what people are, are doing. Uh, but there are other people in the dark pool that do see what's going. So you do get kind of an arm's length uh, response because, you know, you got two people in the dark pool. They start seeing somebody selling. Well, it doesn't really matter if they can sell in the dark pool or not. They may go into the general market and start shorting. They may find uh, other places to buy. If they see somebody, a lot of people buying or somebody buying a lot in the pool, they may want to try to front run them somewhere else. So there's still uh, at an arm's length, some response from the market. It's just those people don't show us the man behind the curtain. Man, I'm going to get it to the award for tortured analogies this year for sure. Anyway, give me a call 877-927-6648. Okay. Okay. Answer that. I hope. Thank you. Are safe. Thank again. Well, wow. lots of scary emails here today. Uh, payday loans. Ooh, I didn't know I could make that. Uh, now they're trying to sell me stuff. Uh, pills, all kinds of stuff. Amazing what the spam is these days. Okay, got that. The Tech Insider is out. Uh, see anything else out here that I wanted to see? I wanted to check back in. Oh, we will be with uh, Tom O'Brien at 3.30 today. We'll be back. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I'm thinking Tom was in Alaska, but I can't remember the years he told me about. But uh, something that came up with Alaska made me start thinking about something that happened uh, uh, about in 2000. And I kind of see the same thing happening again. So it's kind of, a, it's like that. One thing makes me think of another thing, which makes me think of something in the stock market. So uh, we'll go through that, uh, my thought process or lack thereof at 3.30. Of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476. 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. A uh, question on uh, airlines. Um can you have a, 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 a Avis or a Hertz bounce? Yes, you can. Um, you need 78% of the seats filled to break even on a flight. I don't know how they're working out all the plans, uh, planes just sitting there. But from what I see and hear, yeah, are you getting more people? Are you getting 78% of the seats filled? The answer is no. And until that happens, I'm just suspecting this is a dead cat bounce in the airlines, whether it's down on light volume or not. Um, I mean, th these guys are hemorrhaging money on an everyday basis. Eventually, that catches up. I understand, that, as I said, everybody's short out the gizzard. I didn't get I guess the word of today is gizzard. Um, yeah, take out half the seats. <laughs> well, that's an interesting idea. Um, anyway, I if you know, I'm always of the opinion that if you know uh, that uh, you've got a wounded animal, they're the most dangerous. And of course, uh, highly shorted stocks are kind of the wounded, wounded animal. But I would much rather wait for a great setup to short any of these stocks that are losing money on a daily basis and are going to continue to lose money for a while, I would much rather buy these when the turn uh, gets close. And it's I, I just don't see how it's close at all. They may just be held up for a long time by uh, far too many shorts in uh, these stocks, and that's not uncommon. Uh, that's why you see so many of these stocks uh, that uh, – were like, uh, was it Hertz? Uh, basically, bankrupt companies selling shares. It going still going up. You can be too short, and all it takes is you know you want to be short stocks that are above thirty bucks. You don't want to be going out and shorting whatever Hertz was. What was it, two bucks or something? I don't know. H T Z is that what it was? Um. Yeah, it was. There it was. So you got a stock from 78 cents go to 625. It happens, especially um, I can remember Enron and everybody knew it was a fraud. And I was talking to my brother. I remember the because he I was talking to him <laughs> and he was going nuts because I said, I think it was an interday trade. And all I remember was I said, this thing's going to pop about 25 percent. And it did in the next like next five minutes. And I got out of it. And, of course, I had already gotten off the phone with him. And he called me, and I like it went to two bucks, like on the Monday after that or something. He called me up and asked him if I was on the bread line yet. And the interesting part of that was that, no, I'd actually made some fairly good money. There were no shares to short. 
you couldn't buy a share uh, for twice the price of what was uh, what it was going for at the time. And that is a, like I said, that's the wounded animal that you want to very be very careful of if you're trying to short. And if you want to be long the thing for something like the move and hurts, just don't be greedy. You make your first money, get out, turn around, run away, because it is the siren song that will bring you back in where all these people uh, pretty much got sucked into this move on the 8th. Uh, of course, are all on, you know, basically, they burned their money. You might as well just give it to me. In fact, uh, get the TFNN's address and just mail it to us, and let's cut out the middleman, because it, it is nothing more than gambling. And I bring up uh, uh, this quote from Jesse Livermore uh, every once in a while, um, but let me find it here, because I know I've got it. Um, to, but when I read it the first time, I knew... This is exactly what I probably should read every day. And that is, you know, I kind of think a lot of the aphorisms I put out in the den in the early morning are all about getting my head right for the day and reminding myself of all the ways I can go wrong. Uh, But I love this quote from Jesse Livermore. It was the change in my attitude that was of supreme importance to me. It taught me little by little the essential difference between betting on fluctuations and anticipating inevitable advances and declines, the difference between gambling and speculation. And I'll I'll tell you that I think I've said it the last few days that I saw a lot of people doing this exact same thing starting about 1999. In fact, I had a bunch of programmers that were trading all day. And then when the bell rang at four o'clock, they'd be actually programming all night long. So they they would do everything all day long and then actually start to work uh, at four o'clock. And they were making a bunch of money and they were all broke a, by a year later. And there's nothing different here. There's always euphoria. There's always the thought that there's easy money. And I have to tell you, after 22 years, that ad, by the way, is old. We're going to have to get on that. 16 years, it's now six years later. we got to change that ad, although it's a good ad. That's why I haven't changed it so far. Uh, anyway, six, uh, ni- at 1998, I started trading full time. And, of course, I was doing the same thing, so maybe I can't yell at those programmers that much, but um, I had already kind of semi-retired from at least uh, that stuff. Uh, I had been working 80 hours a week for almost nine years, uh, eight years, yeah, eight, nine years to build the company, and I was spent. There was nothing left. So I, I decided to move down here to Florida. The company went public. I was able to avoid about uh, 18%, I think it was at the time, 18% uh, income tax on all those shares uh, that went public. So uh, I could have quit and never made the amount of money uh, that I would just on the taxes after the company went public uh, for moving down here to Florida where they have no taxes. Uh, So it was always, it was a great thing for me, uh, but, um, you know, You're going to get back to some level. This is actually not too bad on Hertz, other than the fact that they're bankrupt. Dollar seventy-one, June eleventh, with one hundred twenty-five million shares. You got twenty-five million shares now, but uh, it is and was different. Do we have anything else? Oh, um, do we have any other questions here? Uh, Have you? Do you have a fail? since you started trading full time. What do you mean by a fail? Don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, I, I am wondering whether she's asking whether or not I've had any drawdowns in my account. No blow ups. Um, but uh, certainly drawdowns and, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you get some big drawdowns and then 
Uh, you quit doing stupid stuff and you learn. If you're lucky. If you live through it. We'll be back in a minute. in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of tfnn.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Uh, what do we have here? Okay. Oh, um, maybe more. That's bad. Have any more? Okay, that's it. Uh, right at uh, 3,100 on the S and P cash. Maybe they're just going to pin it, uh, like they're going to pin uh, Tesla right at 1,000. It's 999, 998. Uh, and of course, you don't actually have to pin it to to the uh, uh, the actual level. A lot of people will execute your uh, execute your uh, Options, uh, if uh, you're, uh, if it's like a quarter in the uh, into the money, so you really got to watch those. Make sure you close out any of those before uh, you uh, you end the day. I would rather, a lot of times, rather make sure 100% that I'm out, pay the commission or whatever it is, even on options that are worth a penny. 
just so that something doesn't happen in the last couple of uh, seconds. You end up uh, long or short a stock, and you can't get out of it until Monday. So if you are playing options in the last minute, just make sure that you're out of the trade. There's no way it's going to get executed. And if it does, get out of it right then. Don't worry about it. Uh, all right, don't worry about any money you're going to lose today because generally that's the kind of trap where they really whop you come Monday morning uh, after options expiration. So uh, just uh, some thoughts out there. Trying to think if there's anything else going on. Looking at the volume, as I said, uh, you're not going to get anywhere close to the 15 billion shares that would really be kind of a blowout. We continue to have these incredibly weak midday parts where the uh, high frequency people can run uh, the S&P 20 points and you really don't get that much volume. They can run the table and then there's nothing. So that's uh, telling you that we are most likely probably going to get into a tighter trading range. Uh, people won't buy at the highs and of course they won't sell at the lows and that's it. See you in 30 minutes uh, with Tom O'Brien. Sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here Monday, same bat channel, same bat time.